It's still plus politics. Now, the Southern Governors Forum has attributed the over-centralization of structures of government to the unending agitations across the country. Now, the chairman of the SGF, Governor Rotimia Kiridolu of Ekiti State, said the fiscal policy and over-centralization of powers in the hands of the federal government have turned the country into a unitary nation. He said this, uh, that this is a major reason for the unending agitations for restructuring. He lamented that putting many items in the exclusive list has concentrated too many powers in the federal government's hands. Akira Dolu said the unity of this country is based on sustainable true federalism. Well, joining us to discuss this is James Ibo, he's a legal practitioner, and Kaber Adamu, a security risk management expert. Thank you very much, Mr. Adamu, for joining us. Great. Um, I'm, I'm going to start by talking about the agitations because this is your area. Um, I do not know because the governors are, of course, on paper, the number one security um, officers of the estates. But we have seen, you and I have been in this country for, I mean, this whole year has been one issue or the other. Um, in terms of the agitations, is it really about restructuring? Because I hear about restructuring just pre-election year every every election cycle we hear about restructuring but um do you think that it's majorly about the fact that there's power resting at the center the fact that governors cannot control the securities in the estate and these agitations like what we've seen in the southeast what we've seen in the northwest what we're seeing also in the southwest could all of this be tied to politics and not necessarily the fact that governors cannot deal uh with these security um um, heads in their states except they get power or some form of nod from the center. So um, that will now read out, out there. Um, but is that the reality? Uh, I'll tell you, each state has approached this um, differently. And I, will, I always like using the Lagos model um, where Lagos has set up a security trust fund that is as good as any privately run um, company and has governance structures that as an, an auditor or someone who is interested in understanding how it's run, I see it and I see how effective it has been in supporting the security architecture at the state, in the state. And then you've got other states that are so op opaque in how they are running uh, or rather contributing to the security architecture that does not allow that type of, of capacity. And yet you hear them criticizing the federal government. So um, I, again, it's a narrative. And um, there, there are some elements of truth in the fact that there is an over-centralization of, um, if I marry now the security now, yes, uh, the security is in the exclusive list and it is centralized at the federal government in um, theory. However, in reality, the operations of security are actually done at the state level and um, the governors have a huge role to play in that. They chair the state security um, councils, they have, uh, they receive the security votes. I'm not aware that any governor have ever rejected any of the security votes. They contribute to the funding of security agencies, um, some of them transparently, like the Lagos example I've given, and then the majority, frankly, nobody knows how they use that, that money. And so um, I hear the agitation, and I can understand when that agitation is related to the issues of equity, justice, and inclusion. But how right and fair is it to put that burden alone on the federal government? The Constitution recognizes three um, um, levels of government, the federal, the state, and the local government level. Now, I'm not aware that any of the state governments have um, allowed the autonomy of the um, local governments to the extent that, for instance, even the various elements of what the local government powers allows within the constitution, those governments have allowed it. So it's easy, for instance, to point a finger at the federal government, but are they on their own allowing the devolution of powers? And again, that's the narrative that I think perhaps in the course of our conversation we can look a little bit more explicitly. But yes, there is a correlation between the, the agitation and unfortunately this centralization, but it is centralization only at the federal level or also at the state level. I think that's subject to a lot of debate.
You, you practically just, you know, bit into my next question, but I'll put a pin on that and push further on the issue of state policing. There's been a lot of agitation for state policing because you see, for example, you have the Met Police in the UK. Um, in the US, you have uh, the New York Police Department and you have the Chicago Police Department. But we do not necessarily have that in this country. And I always, you know, try to pick the brains of security experts in this country as to how that is not happening. Again, it brings to question um, the kind of system of government that we're running, even though we say it's a federation, but we, we seem to be running a unitary system. Does that also play into the reason why we're unable to establish state policing? It's a function of um, our constitution. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the um, security is in the exclusive list. And um, recently, some governors are testing uh, the con that constitutional provision by asking their state assemblies to pass legislation uh, to allow them to have some form of security arrangement. So it's a very interesting development. Um, and I think time would actually uh, solve this issue for us. Um, my professional opinion is that we need to de decentralize security. Um, however, the spectra of the civil war is still glaring at us. What rule, for instance, it um, the ability of certain governors to influence uh, the security architecture within their state that allow the events that preceded the civil war. And um, how are we going to cater to that? Um, my answer is strengthening democracy at the state level. And unfortunately, I'm not hearing that discussion at the moment. The mm -hmm. concentration, especially of the civil society, society, and a lot of the media is at the federal level. And we need to also, I think, put that pressure on the state um, systems so that we have a strengthening democracy at the state at the state system that can check the excesses of the executive arm of government. Without that, then this that spectra that I mentioned, unfortunately, would release itself. And we're likely to see ourselves in another situation. So yes, I believe in decentralization of security um, so that the, both the state and, if possible, the local governments would have some level of security uh, within their control and authority. But before we do that, we should democratize um, these two arms of, um, of government so that there will be checks and balances of the executive arm of government. Wow. At both levels, the state and the local government level. Interesting. Let me throw this. Uh, James Ibo is just joining us. Uh, James, it's very interesting that governors are asking that there be some form of decentralization of power um, from the federal government. But then we, we still have lingering somewhere lurking just around the corner uh, the issue of um you know autonomy for local governments and the states still seem to be holding on very tightly uh, to that and you know they've had times uh, where they've even taken the federal government to court on this particular matter it's just a case of a co uh, pot calling the kettle black because that's what um you know our security analyst is saying here a state need to be doing what they're asking the federal government to do if we really want to have a well-rounded system of government uh, do you buy this particular position? Yes, I think um, the state governments, uh, the state governors are doing what they are doing because the federal government have actually allowed it. You know, we have a system, just like uh, uh, Dr. Damo has said, we have a system where the governors go to Abuja every other day, cap in hand, begging for resources. So they are not looking inward. The everything is connected to the to the center, and I think it is the federal government that has enabled this. Yes, we 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 have we are still suffering the vestiges of the civil war, and um, I think the biggest problem is military intervention in our politics, because that was actually what has created the entire problem. When the army took over, they centralized governance not because it was good for Nigerians because it was convenient for them to stay in control. If we decentralize power, it will be very easy for the security architecture to work because naturally the local government will have a role to play, mm -hmm. the state government will have a role to play, and maybe the civil society will not emphasize more on strengthening the, the government at the state level and the local government. Therefore, now, we cannot target the state Especially when we know that the state depends solely on the federal government. Uh, uh, but, 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 but James, can I come in there? 
when we say that the federal government seems to be enabling the states, uh, it makes it seem like it, 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 it makes it seem like the people don't have a say in this. And I always like to come from that perspective or from that angle. Um, if we always say, oh, the price of bread in the market is high, blame Buhari. What we fail to always point fingers also at the governments that are closest to us, the ones who work directly um, with us, which is our states and local governments. Are we holding them accountable before we even start stretching our hands to the federal government? I'm not in any way also absolving the federal government, but I'm saying, do we not have a role in also making these people responsible one way or the other? Sorry, I, I lost you there. Can you please repeat this? Yes, I'm question? asking I'm if the states themselves, uh, or we the people in the states, do not have uh, a responsibility of holding these governments, the state governments, to uh, their, their, I mean, because it, it looks like you're saying it's the federal government that's enabling them, but what about us, the people who are at the receiving end? Before we talk about the federal government, are we making sure that our states are responsible, that they start looking in? Let me tell you, yes, I think we do, but we are talking about our ability to compare the states to do what they ought to have done. For instance, we are talking about um, um, judicial autonomy, and um, efforts were made to compare state government to, you know, allow uh, state governors, I mean, the judiciary at the state level to draw from the consolidated revenue fund. It's, uh, it's been very difficult. The federal government tried to maybe see how they can maybe uh, send money directly to maybe the Houses of Assembly or to the local government or to the judiciary. That, again, is very difficult. For instance, why should the federal government continue to give gov governors security votes? Where is it in the Constitution? Governors give money to the police. That money is not budgeted for. So if my governor, for instance, decides to give the Commissioner of Police 50 million naira, how will he account for 50 million naira? If he is a corrupt person, he will share the, the money with his friends or, with, or his girlfriends within the police and pretending to be in police job. They buy vehicles for them, and yet there is no process of accountability. What we are saying is that the police have a national budget. Can we begin to look inward to assess how they, how they spend the little money they get? Why should governors be donating money to the police? But, uh, but, but also, as, as we're asking the police to, to give account, again, I'm not saying the police should not give account, will the governors be willing to give account of the security votes? Let's make it fair play. Security votes money. And what supports that in our laws? We have, a, we have a national police force that should be properly funded. That is failing. And most times, governors will tell you we use our security to, 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 to fund um, uh, the police force in our states. What do they do? They use a huge chunk of that money to fund their personal security, you know, to the detriment of the people's security. That explains why you see so many political elites with so many soldiers and police officers policing themselves and their families, not the people. So I, I think we just have to, first, we have to decentralize power. There should be fiscal federalism. How, how do we go about it? Because that's the question I wanted to ask, Mr. Damu, but I'll start with you. How do we go about it? Because, again, my, my other question is, if the federal government is okay and willing to always attend to the governors when they come cap in hand, because there is a purse of sorts uh, of monies coming from the oil producing states it also somewhat makes those states not look within just as you said uh, but the, the federal government can only push states to a certain level the states are also sovereign in their own way so really how much push can the federal government offer um james can you hear me I think I think we uh, we lost connection with James, but let me see if Mr. Kaber can attempt that question. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Kaber, can you go ahead? Um, we'll try to get James back. Okay, so I think it's a case of um, what which comes first, the chicken or the the, the hen or the, or the egg, as, as it were. In um, we are we are both agreed, as it were, that decentralization is, is important. 
Now you are bringing the element of physical federalism. Um, I am absolutely in support of physical federalism. Um, each state should have a level of control over its resources. Uh, but if we agree to move on, and hopefully that's what we've agreed as a, feder as a federation, then how will these states contribute to um, the federation? I think that's where uh, kind of our focus should be on at, at the moment. But then that's why I said it's a case of which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah. Um, those, those things that are within the exclusive list actually allow the federal government to have control over those resources. So at what point are we going to reduce the those several things that are within the exclusive list and perhaps move them to either the concurrent list or even the residual list. And I will still go back to the governors. The National Assembly has the powers and the responsibility to do that. And you agree with me that no uh, influence group, no power group in the country at the moment has influence over the National Assembly like the governors. If the governors, for instance, speak to the senators that are representing their states at the National Assembly, that this is what they want to happen. By now, you would have seen bills in the National Assembly and they would have been mobilizing to achieve that. We've seen them mobilize and we've seen the result of their mobilization. And there is nothing that the governors have attempted to do that they've not succeeded. So why, why are they holding back on this? Why are we not seeing that kind of mobilization uh, to the, the, uh, both the governors and members of House of Rep that are representing that state? Um, I think the politicians need to be uh, straight with us. They need to be serious and tell us in reality what they really want. I hear statements like the one at to the southern governors and foreign chairman. But then in reality, what are the things that we can hold on to? Um, that constitutional review that would reduce those things in the exclusive list for me is a good indication that they are serious and that um, both physical um, um, you know, uh, the, the decentralization that we want that the people would happen. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have. James Ibo is a legal practitioner. Kaber Damu is a security risk management expert. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. It's been Plus Politics. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Go ahead and follow us on YouTube at Plus, uh, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can watch a replay of the show if you missed it. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening.